It is Wednesday night, November 11, 2008. No, it's not. It's the 12th. Sorry to hear that you're sick. I hope you get better well. And it sounds like you're having one of the challenges many teachers have is getting their students to realize that they're the only ones that are going to get it done, that there's nobody else that goes going to do it. I'm not certain how they do it. <laughs> Anyways, um, you didn't have anything funny. And last time I talked about reading something from the Sons of the Prophets, and I decided to go something different this time. I can't remember who got me this book. I think it was Mom and Dad. Patrick Miss Manus, I Fish, Therefore I Am, and Other Observations. Three best-selling works, complete in one volume. Bunch of short stories and, and articles that he wrote for outdoor magazines. He has an interesting sense of humor. In a short story called Poof, No Eyebrows, he talks about his experiments as a kid with uh, black powder. And he and his friend Wretch went from a muzzle loader. They start experimenting more and they decide that they're going to make a cannon. A piece of sewer pipe and their their ammunition is a croquet ball. Attired in our musk muskrat skin hats, which we had sewn up ourselves, we mounted our bicycles and with ca cannon in tow set off for the local golf course, where a fairway would serve as a firing range, a putting green as a target. As we had hoped, the golf course turned out to be deserted. We quickly wheeled the cannon into firing position and began loading the powder. Think that's enough powder, Wretch asked. Better dump in some more, I advise. That croquet ball's pretty heavy. And there's some for good measure, Wretch said. The croquet ball fit a little too tightly, but we managed to ram it down the barrel. Then we both took up positions alongside the cannon to witness the rare and wonderful spectacle of a sewer pipe firing a croquet ball down a golf course. Fair. Ready! Aim! Fire! I commanded. Wretch tripped the firing mechanism. Eventually, the thunder was replaced by clanging bells inside our heads. The shattered pieces of earth and sky fell back into place, and the wobbly world righted itself. Wretch and I limped over by the side of a utility shed and sat down to relax a bit and collect our senses. Presently, a deputy sheriff drove up. He stood for a moment, gazing at the haze of smoke, wafting gently over the golf course, the patch of smoldering turf ringed by fragments of sewer pipe, baby carriage wheels, and pieces of two-by-four. Then, hoisting up his gun belt, he sauntered over to us. You boys know anything about an explosion out this way? he asked. What kind of explosion? Rich asked. A big explosion. I, still, I was still so su stunned. I couldn't even think up a good lie. Anyway, I knew the deputy had us cold. Now, what I want to know, the bo deputy went on, is why are you two boys sitting out here behind this shed smoking? Shucks, I said. If you'd been here a little earlier, you'd have seen us while we were still on fire. I thought for sure he was going to haul us off to jail, but instead he just smiled, took one last look at the smoldering debris, and started to saunter back to his car. Well, if you fellas turn up any information about the explosion, he said over his shoulder, I'd appreciate it if you would let me know. I don't reckon there'll be another one, do you? No, Wretch and I said in unison. Then the deputy stopped, kicked gingerly at something in the ground in front of him. It was Wretch's, mu Wretch's muskrat hat. The deputy turned and gave us a sympathetic look. Too bad about your dog, he said. Anyways. Silly stuff. I hope you get better soon. Talk to you later. Bye.